Okay, a little bit of game time decision here, but I'm going to put the hog half comb on this colony because they're doing so well. I think they'll really fill that hog half comb and draw that wax in lickety split. That's my thought process anyway. So the mistake that I made last year was I put that hog half comb on a colony and I also gave them one super of drawn comb. Well, of course, if you give the bees this and you're asking them to draw wax in each one of these and fill it with honey, well, they're definitely not going to do that if right above here they have a super full of drawn comb that's empty. You know, bees are lazy in a good way, meaning they're not going to spend energy and resources drawing comb when they don't have to. So the plan this year is to give them no other choice. And so uh, this is from last year. I've got a few cassettes here that were drawn but I put this uh, super in the freezer for a couple days to make sure everything was dead in here but that's this is all I'm giving them so they have no choice but to come up here and draw this out and especially with all those bees in there they will move up in here in no time flat and of course queen excluder is going to keep her in this brood chamber and all those worker bees and foragers are going to come up here and fill this with comb honey because I get asked constantly, Josh, do you sell comb honey? I would love to, but no, <laughs> not yet. So uh, I'm tempted to leave them an upper entrance. I think I will. It's a small one, but that little notch there, I'm gonna put this on here push it towards the front so they have that upper entrance and call it good so really good looking colony it's amazing folks the difference between the three you saw before or two or three you saw before and this one when they're 10 feet apart is it not unbelievable the amount of food that is in this colony versus the others so folks that's why you have to check every single colony and you can see i'm gonna pull the uh camera off here so you can see <sighs> unfortunately see all the comb and nectar that i had to pull off that colony and i'm gonna let the bees feed on it okay so there's really no concern with robbing this time of year especially when the flow is about to begin you're not going to see much robbing and there's a lot of nectar there so i'm going to lay this out uh in front of these colonies to let other bees forage on this and bring it back in in because there's no point in, in wasting this right but i'm going to keep that comb too because that's uh beeswax that i will harvest so i just wanted y'all to see um what i pulled off there i hated doing that but they'll be okay there's so much food in here so much food this colony has zero chance of star i shouldn't say zero but very minimal chance of starving so let's go ahead and get in this next colony which i suspect is doing pretty well also and then we'll keep moving down the line let's take a look at this next one which we've looked at before so i think this is the uh white dot queen if i remember correctly should be Losing my daylight, folks. Story of my life. Uh, I can't get through these hives quick enough. How much hive alive? Oh man, there's plenty left on that one. So, once again, I do not suspect this colony is short on food. They're probably like the other one where they're raring to go.
to be like Corey Stevens where I find a way to, oh jeez, quit my day job and just mess with bees. So yeah, there you go. Awesome. Another great colony. I see Varroa right here on this drone brood. Let me see if I can get them off there and bring it in front of the camera. So may have to put formic oh come on zoom see it right there that's varroa right there there's actually two of them uh, let me see if i can rotate this i saw two of them on there but now i only see one but that is varroa destructor right there so i may have to treat this colony with uh um formic acid oops sorry just fell on the floor but you saw the varroa mite so if you see that in drone brood, I haven't done a mite wash, but it's not a good sign. Let me check the other, the other uh, drones here. Uh, nope. 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 I'm gonna open these. There's drones in there. Nope. Nope. Okay, maybe not too bad, but. Stupid mites. God, I hate those mites. Queen, 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 queen. Don't see her, don't see her, don't see her. Shake these mites. Or mites. God. Shake these bees down. I see mites right there. And right there, there's a mite. Probably, my head's probably in the way. Sorry, there's a mite at the tip of my hive tool. So. Lovely. All right, set this uh, Vivaldi board aside. I'm gonna somehow flag this uh, colony that they need treated because here's some more drones, drones. And, you know, a very common question for new beekeepers is, oh my God, I opened my colony, especially those of you that do double deeps and not singles like me. You know, steamy. Uh, oh, there's all these white, <laughs> what do they call them, grubs, usually, in my colony. What is that? Oh my God. Uh, no, those are drones, and you split them apart when you pulled your double deeps apart because drones don't fit in the normal worker brood in these frames, typically. So the bees, if they're given the opportunity where there's more space between the top deep and the bottom deep, they're going to build drones, especially this time of year, in between there. And so as a beekeeper, when you pull those apart, this is an excellent opportunity to go ahead and do a visual inspection for Varroa. The only way to really tell how bad a colony is with Varroa is to do a mite wash. So don't think that you can do this sort of visual inspection to properly assess the mite load of your colony because you cannot, okay? So I'm gonna have to do a mite wash on this colony soon and determine whether determine whether or not I need to buy some uh, formic acid to treat this colony. And again, I to this date, I've never treated for mites when I have honey supers on, but I may break that trend because that's why we have formic acid, formic pro, mite away quick strips, because sometimes despite our best efforts, these colonies coming out of winter, the mite loads are higher than we would like them to be, despite our best efforts. This this colony is stuffed just like the next one. They're wall to wall here. And I see drone brood everywhere. So I know they're queen right. I'm not guessing that. Uh, what I wanna find out is how much food they have. I suspect a lot. And if that's the case, just like the previous colony, I'm gonna super this colony up. They're drawing wax there. Look at that. 
fresh drawn wax there. So this, I'm telling you this right now, this colony is running out of room. And I'm looking for, uh, oh, it's heavy. That's six or seven pounds right there of fresh nectar. The queen's not gonna be on this frame. I don't even have to look. Oh, that's heavy, very heavy, which is good. This is what we want. This is exactly what we want. A little bit lighter, maybe, there she is. Man, I'm telling you, this freaking white dot queen is a rock star. She is the oldest queen in my apiary. Look at this colony. Tell me you would not want these genetics. Calm, easy going. Can you guys see her? She's freaking awesome. Right here. Oh. Look at this queen. She's absolutely amazing. I know she's not gonna fly off because she hasn't swarmed in three years. Look at her. How freaking awesome is that queen? She's had this these colonies just going gangbusters for three years in a row. I mean, she's survived two winters so far. And, you know, some beekeepers are like, oh, you should pinch her. You need a new queen. She's running out. Oh, BS. Look at this colony, guys. Look at this colony. She's awesome. Absolutely awesome. Her wings aren't even tattered. Probably my favorite queen I've ever had. Hands down. Look how calm she is. Look at the bees, how calm they are. Uh... Uh, to catch 22, but because I found her, I'm going to split this colony. I really am because I want her genetics to move on. So I'm going to keep her here and I am going to real quick, I'm going to grab another Langstroth full setup and I'm going to put food, brood, eggs, and bee bread in that other colony. In, in that other uh, Langstroth. And I, I'm gonna split her right now. I've seen enough drones. By the time 16 days passes and a new virgin emerges, she's gonna have plenty of drones to mate with. And God willing, the uh, weather is nice. So I, I absolutely, I, this is my favorite colony, hands down, favorite colony. She, I mean, three years old and look at this. I mean, just going absolutely berserk. So. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video. I'm gonna go grab another colony, or I'm sorry, another hive setup, and we're gonna do a real quick split. So stay tuned. Okay, and we're back. So there's our queen, awesome queen. So colony's looking good. We are gonna go ahead and split this colony. So I'm going to take, it's called a walkaway split. I'm gonna take five frames from this colony, not with the queen and I am going to move them over here into a brand new Langstroth 10 frame colony, okay? So I'm gonna take you through how that works. My dad's gonna record it so you can see me walking you through it here, but this colony is ready to be split. I don't see any queen cups or queen cells, so that's good. They don't have the swarming urge yet, but they're very close. This colony is stuffed. Tons and tons and tons of food, so we don't have to worry about that. And I'm going to go ahead and super up the queen right colony and the colony that I am creating and asking them to raise their own queen, I am going to feed, okay? Because they are going to have nothing but nurse bees, and that's it. And maybe some, you know, the, the bees that protect um the entrance but all the foragers are going to return to that colony so they're not going to have very many foragers here so you have to feed these bees so i'm going to put one to one sugar syrup on there which is going to promote them or encourage them to draw wax okay new comb and when those virgins emerge god willing they go out and successfully bait and come back and i've that's why i have the different colors here so she can find the white colony here and return successfully so dad go ahead and have you hold the camera here okay let's start over here really don't need smoke. such calm bees 
Uh, so let's go ahead and put our queen, who's right here, we're gonna put her back in the colony here. Okay, so we've got, goodness, lots of food on this frame. And we're gonna leave those two out for now. I'm just gonna keep this one over here because I know the queen is on this frame. So that's, uh, I don't know. I'm not gonna say problem number one, but what you need to determine first is where your queen is when you're doing these walkway splits. Okay, so the next frame here. Try to put the sun over my shoulder. So we have capped brood, open brood. I'm just trying to find eggs because you want to make sure when you do these walkaway splits, the colony that is not queen right, you've got to make sure that there's eggs in those cells. So if you need to have uh, a magnifying glass, so be it, and I can see eggs in the middle there. So I'm going to move this frame over to this new hive. I would put them right in the middle here, okay? There's gonna be a lot of nurse bees on this frame because there's open brood. Okay, so let's keep going. So I'd really like to have another frame of open brood. This is mostly capped brood, which is again in bee bread. That's also good. You also wanna make sure, and I see some eggs right there on the top. See all this capped brood though? That's going to be emerging soon. And there's also bee bread and pollen in the cells in between. So this is another good frame to put over here because these bees are going to emerge very soon. There's also eggs in here, which once again, the queen is running out of space to lay, which is why I'm telling you within a week or two, they're gonna start building swarm cells. So, this, this, this right here, I don't actively suppress swarming, but by splitting like this real early in March, it's going to inherently suppress swarming. So I'm not really looking for more open brood here although we have some yep and there's brood that's getting ready to be capped same yep so not necessarily new brood here i'm actually going to leave this one in the colony okay so we've got two frames over there of open brood pretty young plenty of eggs for those workers to choose which one they wanna create a queen from. And here's some more eggs. So again, open brood, lots of bee bread. I, wanted, I want to leave the existing colony food as well, right? So, um, yep, I see eggs in here as well. Although not as many, so she hasn't been patrolling this frame yet. But I'm gonna go ahead and move this one over and so now that's three frames in the in the new colony in the split okay and there these bees in here are immediately going to start roaring it's called the queenless roar they know that they cannot sense that queen pheromone anymore and they know that they're queenless so now what i'm looking for is food just food And there's honey on this one. Not a ton. Nectar in this one. Yep. So I'm gonna move this one to the new colony. All the foragers that happen to be on here are gonna go back to the original colony, which is fine. But this colony is going to need fed. The original colony has quite a bit of food. I'm gonna make sure that they have all the food they need. Just to scoot on me because there's not a lot of weight here. There we go. All right. 
really need one more frame. If I can find an outside frame with, yeah, here we go. Again, this frame is chock full of food. Oops. Not much food on this one, probably mostly foragers. They're all gonna return to that other colony, but that's okay. So that gives us our 10 frames. Okay, and I'm gonna, where's my high tool that is it over here? Uh, yeah, all right. And again, I've seen drones, not a ton of drones, folks, but within, you know, it's gonna take six, even if they start raising a queen tonight, it's gonna take 16 days, okay? Until a virgin emerges. She's not gonna go on her mating flights for a few days, so, Two to three weeks from now, we're going to have plenty of drones. I've seen lots of drone brood that's getting ready. It's not recently capped. It's drone brood that is getting ready to emerge. And so I think we're good on this split. So let me go ahead and grab the top here. So I need to put this on the colony. Okay. This colony is queenless. I can already hear them roaring, to be honest with you. So I'm gonna grab a rapid feeder. Okay. Put this right on top of the colony here. Make sure that this uh, these holes are lined up. The bees can't escape. Alright. Gotta empty super. And I've got one-to-one -one syrup. And if you're doing a split early like I'm doing here, you cannot stop feeding, okay? You've got to feed syrup until the flow is on. Because they're, they're gonna need this to draw out comb. You saw the uh, five frames there that I'm asking them to draw out, okay? They're not gonna have hardly any foragers in this colony to bring back nectar. So you've got to feed them, you have to feed them. And keep an eye on their, on their uh, syrup, right? So check every one to two days. There we go. And this colony, God willing, will successfully requeen itself with that awesome white dot queen's genetics. Another great colony in my apiary. Let me go uh, find a break here. So I like to place a, like to place a small break on top of these colonies. Right on top of these. Okay, now typically what I've done, let me go grab a uh, cinder block over here. I'm going to leave that red brick off, which tells me it's a little unbalanced here, but the weight will level these four by fours out. Um, this is gonna tell me that this colony is not queen right, okay? Now, Jason Crook is <laughs> gonna yell at me because he's gonna be like, that's why you need the queen right dial. I'm not disagreeing. Maybe I'll pick some up, but uh, at a glance, I can tell if there's no red brick on top of here that this colony is in the process of requeening itself. Now, I'm gonna have to remember that today is March 13th so I am going to leave this colony alone until April 13th. And that's the soonest 
that I'm going to get in this colony to check to see if they have successfully uh, had a queen, made a queen return, and she's laying. Because the time frame is about a month. From an egg to when you can expect to see new eggs, it's about a month. Um, and my, my hand's already itching from those stings. Uh, if you were to get, you know, avoid the urge to get into a colony and check before a month because you can do way more damage than good. Uh, there's a lot of evidence and supporting research out there if you want me to send it to you. But resist the urge to want to check in here to see if you have a mated queen. Trust me, I have the same urge you do and I wanna know if they were successful. But if you do it before a month, you can really do a lot more damage than good. So uh, a word of caution. So I will not check this again, hold me to this, until April 13th. So two days before tax day, okay? So, but that's it. Um, I need to slide the IPM board in here because we have, we still have temperatures that's gonna get down to the upper 20s coming. So. I'm gonna put an IPM board in this one, but that's it. That's a walk away split. Oh, actually, sorry, Dad, let's go ahead and... Um... Josh. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and get the rest of these inside this colony. And uh, you wanna make sure this colony gets a button back, backed up. So uh, stay tuned and I'll do that here in just a minute. All right. So let's get this colony put back together. This is the original one where we had our white dot queen on this frame. So this is going to remain queen right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this frame of food. Oh, good Lord, that's heavy. Right here, close to the outside. But this frame here that has a little bit of food, I'm gonna put that at frame number, uh, whatever you wanna call it, nine next to 10, okay? And then our queen was on this frame. I don't see her right now, but I know she's in here. Wait a minute, where's my hive tool? <laughs> Hang on, I'm gonna find my hive tool. Here it is. So let's move these bees back over. Let's see if I can spot the queen real quick here. Yeah, I know she's in here. At least she was, right, folks? Sorry, I don't understand. Okay, Siri, I wasn't talking to you. Every time. <laughs> she could have ventured off, who knows, folks. disappeared she may have ventured over to this outer frame let's see or she could be on the side of the box but very unlikely she went anywhere Ugh. heavy heavy there she is okay so we see her right here see her right there that's our awesome queen, yay. Okay, so I'm gonna put this frame back in the middle here. Put her highness in the middle. Okay, we got bees on the edge here. And then we're gonna take all of these and we're gonna push them towards the middle, okay? Ugh. And I know I'm gonna get some comments, bad Josh, because I haven't gotten around to waxing these yet. I know, I know, terrible, awful, horrible, bad Josh. You don't have to tell me, I know, okay? Brand new foundation, zero wax, 
Call the beekeeping police. This time of year, coming out of winter, springtime, my opinion, I can get away with this. I'm gonna put some feed on this colony, one to one, okay? I'm gonna promote wax production, okay? Can y'all tell that I get trolls in the comments, you know? Anybody that's considering doing uh, YouTube, just know you're gonna get the trolls, okay? The uh, couch police that know way more than you do and have been doing it, you know, 560 years longer than you have, and they have the answer to everything you're doing wrong. Can you tell it's irritating? <laughs> uh, I'll be honest with you guys. I just block and delete. I'll be honest with you. I, uh, I'm too old to deal with uh, the trolls. So go uh, sit under another bridge because I don't have time for you. If you don't like what I'm doing or you disagree, go watch something else. Life is too short don't waste your time watching my channel so okay uh let's go ahead and get the inner cover on these bees oh some bees here on the edge nectar all right let's get this on top okay uh wait a minute i'm sorry I want to turn this one face down. No, I want to do it face up because, uh, okay, I'm debating myself now. I'm gonna give them the notch face down for an alternate entrance. And I'm gonna put, like I said, I'm gonna put one-to-one -one sugar syrup on this colony because even though they're queen right, again, I just depleted half their population. So I want them to draw that foundation out with comb and I, I, I gotta help them do that. So I'm gonna feed them sugar syrup, so bear with me here. I'm gonna go grab it from the uh, UTV. All right, let's go ahead and... It's good timing that I uh, built all these supers and got them painted because they're definitely needed right now during this time of the year when starvation is dangerous so let's go ahead and fill this with the one-to-one -one syrup with the hive alive really I, I tell you you know dave hansberry who's a good friend of mine swears by this hive alive and i'm telling you i'm starting to be a believer this uh <laughs> This stuff really kicks up the brood rearing and uh, seems to be promoting healthy bees. So I'm going to stick with it. If you didn't, you know, like I said before, it's a little off colored here because I had some leftover sugar with pollen sub in it. Not much pollen sub, but a little bit. But that's why you see the off color. Because typically sugar syrup is pretty clear. And the Hive Alive doesn't color it any, so. Okay. Whew. Man, that's only like, what is that, three, two colonies with a split? And I'm tired. I mean, when you work all day and, I mean, Dave, Dave is going to laugh at me because that guy's not human. He goes through like, I don't know, 250 hives a day. I swear to God, I don't know how he does it and works a full-time job maybe because he doesn't have three little munchkins at home like i do but that, that, that's going to be my excuse okay that's not really the excuse but that that's what i'm gonna that's what i'm gonna say so <laughs> i do the best i can so uh it's funny three colonies that were desperate for food and two that have tons of food uh e even though this one after i split it needs more food of course this one has so much food it's 
it's busting. I, I'm scared to death they're gonna swarm because they're gonna, the, that queen is gonna get honey bound, but I'm praying that giving these two hog half combs over here, the bees are gonna be able to move the honey up, the nectar up into those hog half combs and cure it into honey. And I'm gonna be able to satisfy my customers that have been begging me for comb honey for three years now. So uh, I'm trying folks, I'm trying, so. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and get the cinder block back on this one. And this is absolutely queen right. So we're gonna leave that brick that way. And I think that's it. So, whew, I'm tired. Uh, folks, I am going to go home, take a shower, and have some dinner. So, uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, coming out of winter, the springtime frame, this is the, the busy, 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 busy time for beekeepers. We are in the weeds, no pun intended, and it's just nonstop because the bees aren't going to wait so you can't wait either you have got to get out here you have got to check weight or your bees are going to die so inevitably i hate to say it we're going to see a lot of facebook posts coming up from new beekeepers why oh why did my bees die and it's sad but it's going to be a very obvious reason it's either going to be well what was your mite treatment and did you treat for varroa mites? So what's that? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. Well, there's answer number one. Or yeah, I, tre I treated for mites. I did Apivar, I did Apigard, I did blah, 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 blah. I did oxalic acid, I did blah, blah, blah. But you know, March and eight, you know, January and February, they were great. Oh, I saw them out flying, blah, 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 blah. But March and April, man, they just, they're, they're just gone. And I opened up the hive and all the bees have their heads stuck in the comb and their butts sticking out. So what happened? Well, they starved. Because that queen in February is laying like crazy. She is ramping up for the honey flow, okay? So there's, as you saw in these, there's brood everywhere. Open brood, capped brood, bees galore. They're emerging left and right. And I don't know about where you are. I mean, you know, I, my audience is all across the world. So here in the United States and Kentucky, in March and April, we still have cold snaps. It's not spring yet. Uh, yes, it's 75 degrees outside right now, but it is not spring yet. And we're gonna have 29 degree weather in a few days. And if there's a bunch of rain and it's cold and we're supposed to get like snow flurries, I think in a couple days, I mean, it's insane. It's 75 folks right now. It's gorgeous out here. And we're gonna get snow, snow flurries in a few days. So what does that mean? That means the bees are gonna get trapped inside the colony. And guess what? When you have bees stuck inside and you have population rapidly increasing, what do you think that means? I mean, do any of you have teenagers in your house stuck inside during a cold snap? It means that your pantry and your refrigerator gets decimated in a few days. Well, that's what happens in the bee community also, right? So they starve. Uh, and I had one colony starve on me last year and it broke my heart because it was 100% my fault. I did not get out here in time and feed them. And that breaks my heart, but we learn from those mistakes. I make many 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 mistakes in beekeeping many okay uh i am so far beyond perfect it's funny uh but how i think the 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 judge of a of a beekeeper worth their salt is how many repeat mistakes do you make okay how many repeat mistakes so learn from them that's that's the moral of that little story there right so uh that means this year i'm out here in march checking hives left and right because i don't want another colony to starve i may think they're okay but like this one who's my god more than okay they have so much food it's it's oozing out of the hive they're not in any danger of starving but the three colonies over there are and they're in the same yard 
okay so again i, I know i've kind of gone off on a tangent here i apologize but this is important stuff folks okay so you newer beekeepers which is who i primarily am targeting on these videos okay please 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 do your research Make sure that you get out in your colonies in March and April and check those weights. Check, you have to check the resources when the, when the days are nice like this. Don't do it when it's 30 degrees outside. When it's nice outside and they're not clustered, you need to get in your colonies and look at frames, okay? You need to check their food resources. That's the number one problem right now. Yes, Varroa is always a problem, but right now, March and April, it's starvation, period. So. Okay, I've rambled on long enough at the end of this video. So I hope you guys found this informative. I'm sorry that the other two colonies, uh, I was unable to record them. I did find the queens. I got them marked with red, so that's the good news. Um, so they, they're, they're doing well. They have syrup on them now. So I think they're going to be fine. They were sucking it down the last time I checked. So anyway, that's it. Uh, man, I... Enjoy this nice weather if you're if you're here if you're in the Midwest because it's absolutely beautiful right now uh, for March. We're supposed to be in the 50s and we're in the 70s right now. So <laughs> you know, get out with your family, get out with your bees, enjoy this wonderful weather, and uh, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please it really helps it if you give me the thumbs up, uh, hit the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber. I just passed. Uh, 3,000. It blows my mind. I, I can't believe 3,000 people want to watch what I'm doing. So I'm extremely humbled. I'm very grateful. God is awesome. And so uh, I just want to wish you all the best. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you guys on the next video.